Bonjour, it's Denisha. Cozy season is up on us, so today we're gonna be doing five fall sketchbook ideas. So for my first idea, I wanted to do a pretty simple painting to get you guys warmed up with using colors, but I wanted to set up my desk first, which is why I pull out my sunset lamp to kind of make my room look cozy. And yeah, I started preparing for it. And in the meantime, I'm also showing you ideas that you can get while going for Pinterest because that's where I also get a lot of my inspiration. So basically, if you type aesthetic fall, autumn, cozy, and just start scrolling, just add art or drawing in the end, you'll get a bunch of ideas. And I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at other paintings and other drawings, other doodles to kind of get inspired from it, as long as you can put your spin around it. And the picture that I really liked, I showed on the screen, was this window. And then you saw the outside where it was fall and cozy. And I thought it would be the perfect painting to start with because when it's fall, when it's autumn, you kind of want to stay inside, drink some hot chocolate or coffee or tea, whatever you like, and just look out outside, see the leaf changing colors. So I wanted to have that in my sketchbook. And I think it's a great painting to do because since it's the window outside, you don't really have to be perfect when painting it. And I could go really quickly with adding the colors. I don't have to put too much detail with it. So I think it's a simple, perfect idea for your sketchbook because in the end, you'll end up adding the dark windows. So it'll kind of create a perspective of what is outside and you're on the inside looking outside and you can put as many details you want or as little. I think it would still turn out beautiful. Wow, that was a long intro, but this video is going to be a very chatty one because I kind of want to walk you guys through the process, what I'm doing. So yeah, for this painting, you can basically put anything on the outside that you like. But if you want to follow along on what I'm doing, I basically started out with my background by using some green and mixing it with some brown and orange and yellow, just playing around with the colors, just so that I don't get a perfect green because we want to show that the season is slowly changing, the leaf are not green anymore in the background. It's kind of far away, so you don't have to put too much details. Just have fun with your colors and paintbrush. And then after that, you can go in with a pointed brush and just start drawing out the branches they don't have to be perfect just make the trunk thicker and as you get to the branches just do thinner one and as you saw I kind of went quickly for it because I was gonna end up covering it with some orange vibrant colored leaves so this part was my favorite part I still use the same pointed brush and just started dabbing in some of the orange and then I use some of the red to kind of show some shade in it and then i went back by adding some yellow on top just to kind of drop some highlights on it and yeah i went back and added some grass that was more orange well it could be grass it could be out of the part of the tree it could be a bush but i'm thinking of this painting more to be like outside of the window like i said so it's kind of like blurred out in my mind um that's kind of how i want to interpret it so I'm not putting too much pressure on me to make it perfect exactly how it's supposed to look like in real life. I'm just playing around the colors, setting up the mood, how it's going to be outside. And later on, when I will add the window, you'll see how it would turn out okay. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Like I said, have fun with the colors. I've added the orange part. I played around with red. I'm also adding brown and I felt like it needed darker colors. So I went back and added a little bit of the dark green just to create some perspective in the painting. And it was finally time to add the windows. And don't look at the other side of my sketchbook. I was actually trying to work on two paintings at the time, but that is for later in this video. So let's focus on the first painting before. Um, yeah, as you saw, after waiting for the painting to dry, I went in with some black colors and started adding the window. I didn't use a ruler or anything because I just kind of wanted to paint with my hand and not have to measure anything. So if you want to use your ruler, go ahead. I felt confident that day, so that's what I did. And after doing the window, I kind of wanted to add a little cat in the corner just to kind of have like a little pet staring outside. So I thought it'd be really cute. You can have a dog, you can have a vase or a flower. So I will leave that up to you or you could just add a cat like I did. And 
for my second idea, I wanted to take a little break from painting just to go into doodling and using my pen because I also know not everyone wants to paint in their sketchbook. Sometimes you just want to doodle something. So I got something for you guys. So if you first don't know what to start doodling, I would suggest just writing the word fall season or autumn. I chose to write autumn because I think it's a pretty word. And I decided to just curl the edges of the letters and in the beginning, I wanted to start drawing pumpkins because I feel like it could fit over there. So I decided to stack three pumpkins on top of each other and kind of connect it with the word as well. And as you can see, I'm making it pretty simple. So basically just adding the line and then curving it on the edges until it looks like a pumpkin. And I added the little tip on top to look like the branch it came off from and yeah I just started shading the bottom because <laughs> I just felt like it so I just wanted to remind you guys that it's your sketchbook you can start cross hatching putting dots in the doodle it's just a place for you to have fun and you don't need the same kind of pen that I have you can use like a normal pen or pencil and just doodle along with me The next doodle idea I had was adding a leaf. <laughs> it's so simple, but it makes sense because if you walk around outside when it's fall, you will definitely see a lot of leaf on the ground. And I love when I walk on them and they make this nice crunching sound. I can't wait to do that this year. And the next one was an acorn. I think that was pretty simple to do. I also added a candy cane because I feel like for Halloween that also comes around. And then I drew a little hat. <laughs> I think I'm trying to reference, I mean, I don't think, I am trying to reference like Harry Potter because I feel like a lot of us wants to go back to watch the movies because it's the season for it. And of course, I added my little latte cup because I'll definitely be drinking a lot of hot latte or hot cocoa if you don't wanna drink caffeine. So I definitely would have one of those two. Actually, what am I talking about? We'll be drinking pumpkin spice latte, aren't we? <laughs> Let me know down below if you guys are excited for pumpkin spice lattes or if you're already having it. But anyway, the next I had, since talking along the theme of Harry Potter, I also added the glasses and tried to put the little sign if you see it. That's what I tried doing there. I hope you could tell. And I also drew a little broom. It's not the perfect broom, but you can tell it's a broom, so good enough <laughs> and i added apple because i also like going apple picking here of course we have books because who wants to stay inside cozy and read book that's me of course and then i also added an umbrella because it can be rainy season depending on when you leave and maybe you want to go out if you don't want to be cozy or you could go out get your coffee be cold and then come back, drink it while being warm. I don't know why I'm just trying to set a mood for this, but anyway, I added a bunch of those little doodles and I wanted to finish it by just kind of playing around, not with colors this time, but with my pen, just doing some little swirls and putting some dots around to complete the page and basically just have fun. If you guys are doodling along with me or planning to, feel free to send it to me on Instagram. I would love to see your creations. Now that we got our hands warmed up from painting and doodling, we're gonna create an interesting painting. And don't mind the other painting above. I was working on two paintings at the same time. So while the first painting was drying before I added the windows, I started working on this one. So yeah, it's not timeline specific, <laughs> but it's idea specific. <laughs> anyway, let's stop explaining and let's get into the painting part. So for this painting, I wanted to draw a house with lots of windows. So the way I saw it was we already had a window. We're looking from inside the house. And now I wanted my second page in the sketchbook to be showing the outside of the house. Because when I was scrolling for Pinterest, I saw a lot of nice houses kind of tucked in away between all these beautiful colored trees. 
and I wanted to have it in my sketchbook. I know that not a lot of people would probably want to draw houses, so you can draw a little cabin, a simple cabin, something small hiding in between the trees. I just wanted to go extra with a big house, but you guys can definitely go that way too. As I think the most fun part would be adding the trees because there will be so many colors that you can play around with, but let's get over with adding the house first. As you can see, I'm referencing from a picture to do this painting, but if you guys live somewhere where you saw something nice, you can definitely paint from real life too. So for me, this house, I wasn't planning to make it perfect. I just wanted to put the details in as much as I could and then start painting the background. I usually wouldn't do that, but I had this burst of inspiration to paint this house, so I did. And I'm not the best at making everything look straight, but I think it still turned out decent. I was just following along from the picture and at least adding the details where windows could be and kind of adding some small gradient as you can see like the top of the roof had lighter gray and then I add more black to make it darker gray and the best feature which was the chimney. And after I felt like I was done with the house I went back with my tiny brush and started adding some of the details of the trees and some of the trees I made it that it would still be green just like the picture and it would be those evergreen tree which would be like I think Christmas tree pine trees I think they are called um, sorry I <laughs> English is not my first language so sometimes I forget what tree they are called so yeah those green trees basically I started by adding them and then I started mixing orange with some brown to kind of show hints of where fall was showing up so where the leaves were turning colors so we had some trees that was turning in quicker than the others i just wanted to add that on the hill and as we got closer the trees would get bigger but yeah i hope i'm still making sense because most of it is just me playing around with colors because it's in the background and if you add the colors and i basically do like a dabbing motion when i'm adding them it would still look like trees from far anyway so yeah i just like playing around with colors and as for now, I'm adding all the green trees first and then I'll make the fall trees come out later. So yeah, basically just the Christmas trees because you can tell they are trees by the distinct shape that they have. So I wanted to get that out of the way for most of the part and then go into adding the other colors. And as you can see in my palette, I just don't have orange. I have orange, yellow, white, red, and brown because we want to create different layers and shades and highlights. So I wanted to add a bush in front of the house, but I didn't want it to just be orange. So I went in there and mixed some brown with it just to make it dark. And only on the top, I would go with like the bright orange and mix it with some yellow to kind of add the highlights where light would be hitting it. So I just kind of played along with that and then I started creating some sort of path because I didn't want the house to just be fully lost in between the trees. So I first added the path which was basically brown and some orica color with some white mixed together just to create that. And I went back in to add my pine trees <laughs> i was gonna say christmas tree again but yeah it will be christmas after fall so for now i'm just using my pointed brush to kind of shape out the pine trees so basically i would draw a straight line vertically and draw upward diagonal lines and mirror it on the other side of the vertical line and just repeat that and increase the size as i go down and after that i went back with some orange and brown just to kind of have the background be more of the fall colors and I'm gonna go back on top to add the details again. So I was just trying to fill in the spaces where I could and it doesn't have to be too much detail because as long as you get the shape, your mind would be able to know what it is. So when you're looking at it right now, you can tell I tried putting a pine tree. So this is 
the goal that I was going for when I was painting and it's a great way to not put too much pressure on yourself and actually enjoy the painting rather than thinking of the end result all the time and how to make it look perfect and beautiful and exactly the same as you had thought so yeah now you're just thinking about playing with colors and creating shapes so after i added some green and orange i went back to kind of now mix the orange more with yellow so touch a little bit of the orange add more yellow and filling the spaces that was left on top because a lot of trees some of the trees are red some of the trees are orange and we also have trees that are yellow so it was a lot of fun to kind of play around with that and I really enjoy filling in the spaces and for the foreground I'm not gonna lie I think I wanted to be done with the painting so I wanted to add big brown grasses <laughs> in the front so that's what I did basically and then I went back to merge it with some green just so that way there is some shape to it there is some shade to it and some highlights so you can still tell there's some grass and then I went back with some white to create the path that I had did earlier just to kind of add more definition on it and my favorite part was by the time I was done with the foreground the background had already dried up so I went back with some white and started adding some of the fume or smoke that would come from the chimney and this was my favorite part I think that's what kind of called me when I would look at the picture so I really wanted to have that in my painting and yeah after that I decided to add some finishing touches which was the white branches just to kind of bring some definition without trying too hard because it's just dipping your pointed brush in some white and drawing some branches and then going back with covering some part of it with some leaf again and you can call it a day oh actually we can't call it a day yet because I forgot to paint the sky so let's just do that real quick I wanted to make it cozy so it's not a blue sky it's gonna be more on the gray side so I believe the gray sky would definitely match the rest of the painting And for my idea for, I actually had some colored pencil laying around that I used to use to journal with them and I wanted to just draw with them this time in my sketchbook. So for this spread, I want to draw a book, actually a journal, and I didn't want it to be perfect. I wanted it to have like this rough shady side, it's just like a quick sketch kind of feeling I wanted to do with it. So. I drew the journal with like a page kind of like slowly moving and then I went into adding a pen because the person was journeying and left a pen down there and the next idea I got would be of course your little mug of some sort of drink in it which would be tea slash coffee slash hot cocoa or hot water <laughs> if you want to drink hot water that's okay but I added a mug that had some latte art and this was my attempt at showing the latte art on top but it's not perfect but you can still see the essence of what I was trying to get at I was basically just trying to set the mood for it and the next drawing was adding the leaf a maple leaf I think is what it's called so I added it behind the book and the next prompt I actually got this idea from Pinterest of course it, I think it's called gypsophile it's like those flowers that has this white buds that looks like together if you have a bunch of them it's like a beautiful bouquet of clouds basically so I wanted to add that on top of the book just to make it look more aesthetic basically <laughs> and as you can see drawing branches you don't have to be perfect with it I was kind of quickly shading over it to add the details and I then wanted to draw a big pumpkin like you see in my setup right now there's like two cute little pumpkins so I kind of wanted to draw it from that angle so I did a rough sketch of it in the corner and then started shading it because I didn't want it to look perfect I just wanted like a quick rough sketch feeling into this page so yeah that's what I did before I moved on to the next drawing
and as I'm drawing some of them are coming from my mind but most of them I'm actually following along from inspiration I'm taking from the phone so for this one I looked at a picture of a scarf and I kind of wanted to add that in the bottom corner to complete this spread and I really like the fact that you would draw the scarf but then also add the lines so it would show like the different patterns on it and kind of create a flow of how the cloth is moving around <laughs> i don't know what i try to say here but i think you'll understand what i tried saying i went back to add more of this little flower on the top just to kind of balance everything out on the page because it looked more full on one side more than the other so then after that I just decided to have fun with my pen <laughs> I basically just drew some dots and just to kind of add my version of sparkle into this page and I went straight into writing in the journal which was a little code which I saw online about autumn and that basically reads autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go I really like this saying so I want it in my sketchbook and the next page I just wanted to add pumpkin spice latte <laughs> because I kind of wanted to taste it right now so I think I need to go to a coffee shop to have that because this is the second time I mentioned it within this video right anyway since we are having fun why not add some more color into the spread you can totally stop right there after sketching it out with one pen but I kind of wanted to go a step further and just add a little pop of color and since I had some colored pencil laying around why not just start shading it and I had no plans really going into it I just kind of wanted to add some colors here and there for the leaf and the pumpkin because it was orange and a little bit of pink on the scarf itself final idea actually I was gonna stop at idea 4 but as you know I've been saying I tend to scroll a lot on Pinterest I saw those beautiful paintings slash sketches I guess it's mostly a sketch with just the painting of the light coming out of a house or a building I really love how it looked like and I felt like it definitely fit the mood of spooky season, cozy season, fall season so I really wanted to add it in my sketchbook and as you can see it was already dark at night I don't usually record me painting at night anyway I started by painting the background with a dark grey color and the top part was gonna be darker than the middle it didn't have to be perfect like you saw you could still probably see the brush stroke but it was gonna go in the background so it was fine and for the drawing itself I really love one of the pictures that I saw was this house in this dark forest so I went back after the first layer dried then I brought out my pen and started sketching out the house and the tall trees and then I started shading them and for shading I only use one pen basically to do all of it for shading I just roughly shaded on the inside of the trunks and then I would go with the background to kind of add some details of the leaf and leave out some parts so you can still see some of the outlines I then quickly added some bushes on the side it didn't have to be perfect as long as it was a bush looking thing that was good for me and I added the pathway for it and then I tried adding the outline of tall trees in the background but not too much detail as long as your mind can see what I was trying to do that was good enough for me after that I started by adding the windows which I was really excited about because this is where the light would be coming from so after shaping that out I went back used some of the colors that I had earlier 
and just mix some yellow with some white and then painted the inside of the house but also added some of the same colors on the outside just to show the light reflecting on the trunks and on the alleyway and yeah basically just have fun with that section Alright, these were my five sketchbook fall ideas. Let me know what you thought about them. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and out of those five painting and doodles, which one was your favorite? Comment down below, I would really like to know it and let me know if you actually followed along any of the paintings or doodles I did and send it over to me on Instagram. And I will see you in the next one. Allez, bye!